couple of months ago, I was giving a Dharma talk up in the Bay Area. And after the talk, a woman came up and said, you know, this made me think. Maybe my life isn't determined by my DNA. And I was surprised that she'd been going to Dharma talks long enough and yet was still able to maintain the idea that somehow the DNA determined everything that was going to happen in her life, everything she was going to do. But then it is easy to have that view in conjunction with a lot of stuff that is taught as Dharma, the idea that there's really no self there, things are just kind of happening on their own. And the only way to find happiness is to get out of the way. Not have any desires for anything to happen differently from what it is. Just to accept things as they are and be done with it. That's not what the Buddha taught. His teachings all start with the, the power of intention. Your mind is what shapes your experience. You're not just passive recipients. If we act as passive recipients, I mean, we can do that, but our lives will be like the motion of dust motes in the air, what they call Brownian motion, where they just, things just bump up against each other. And if you were to draw a map of the motions of one dust mote through the air, it would be a lot of zigzags. But as the Buddha said, our identity as a being centers around the fact that we have this need to feed. That's a reciprocal relationship. You need to be a being in order to find the food, but because you're a being, you need food. And our intentions shape what we experience. That's, for most of us, that's the intention, to feed, either physically or emotionally. But we're constantly out there looking for some sort, of, some sort of sustenance. And as the Buddha said, that's why we suffer. That, this doesn't mean that intention is bad. It simply means that we have to redirect it. And this is why we meditate. We're learning how to shape our intentions, get more control over them, so that our random moods don't take over. And we can actually decide what we want to do with our lives. I mean, you look at the Buddha. He was hardly a passive recipient of events around him. He decided he didn't want to rest until he found the ultimate happiness. He would do whatever it took. And it took him down some blind alleys, and it took him through a lot of hardship. But he stuck with it. He was determined he wasn't going to give up until he had found the best thing that human effort could, could find. As he found, it was the way to end suffering. Then he spent all the rest of his life teaching that to other people. That was the most valuable thing to, that he could teach. And the main message was that the suffering is not due to unpleasant things outside. Sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations. The suffering comes from your craving. It comes from within. It's what we do with those sights, sounds, smells, tastes taste, tactile sensations, that makes us suffer. It's because we're doing those things in ignorance. We all want happiness, and you would think that everything we do would be for the sake of happiness. There are a lot of pains we put up with because we think it would lead to something good down the line. But all too often, it's the other way around. We get a pleasure and we discover that it's going to create suffering down the line. Here again, the, the cause is not outside, the cause is inside. It's our own ignorance. You can't blame the social media, you can't blame any kind of media, you can't blame people outside for giving you the wrong ideas. Your mind picked up its ideas. And if it didn't have that germ of its own ignorance inside, it wouldn't pick up ignorant ideas. So you have to keep looking back into the mind. Your mind as you experience it from within, your body as you experience it from within. That's where the suffering is felt, but that's where it's going to be cured. 
So instead of being just on the receiving end of things, we're, we're very much on the generating end. The Thai Johns talk about this a lot. They talk about the currents that come flowing out of the mind. These they say are the effluents. And these are the things that run our lives. So you have to watch them carefully to see if they're going to move you in the right direction or the wrong direction. Suffering is an inside job, but the cure is an inside job as well. You have it within you to develop the qualities that you need in order to bring knowledge to these processes. So that they can lead to the happiness you want. If we were simply recipients of things, meditation wouldn't mean anything at all. It wouldn't accomplish anything aside from maybe being a place to rest. But it's a lot more than that. We rest so that we can then do the work that needs to be done right here, to see our intentions in action. Because here's that great irony. It's our intentions that shape our lives, but we're often ignorant of those intentions. All too often you do something and people ask you why you did it, and then you have to think up an answer. It's not like the answer was ready-made, or that it was very clear why you did it. That's a sign of ignorance, and it's a, it's a dangerous thing to look at. It's a dangerous thing going on in your mind. You want to learn how to be aware of what's going on in your mind so you can send it in the right direction. This is why we meditate. To get still right here and to then watch what's going on, to see the processes by which a desire moves in and then it creates a little world around itself and it creates a sense of who you are around itself. And then you stick with it as long as it seems like it's going to be worthwhile. But then maybe another desire comes up, and it'll be another you in another world. Then you have to decide which ones to go with, which ones to let go of. And if you're not doing this with a sense of awareness, you can create all kinds of trouble. So be very clear about why we're here. We're already shaping things with our fabrications of the way we breathe, the way we talk to ourselves, the perceptions and feelings we have. So let's do that well. As what I said, create a path. And the central factor in the path is right concentration. So work on this. Because it's right here where things will become apparent. You use your intentions to create the concentration, and then once the concentration is there, it allows you to see the power of intention even more clearly. And the more clarity you bring to this, the, the more your actions do become part of a path. All those little zigzags of the dust boats in the air suddenly straighten out, and they go someplace. They don't go anyplace outside, they just go deeper inside. But they take the mind to a higher, higher level of happiness, higher level of awareness, a more refined sense of what true happiness is. So the power for all this comes from within. The problem comes within, but also the, the desire to solve the problem comes from within. Nobody's making you sit here and meditate. It's because you realize there's something wrong. There's an area of ignorance in your mind that you want to cure. And that's a good intention to start out with.